Bring the field around for the start of the TSI Harley-Davidson 150. On the outside of the front row in car number 09 in the Triple G Scaffold Services Chevrolet, a time trial this evening of 18.177. Car number 09 from Marshfield, Massachusetts, Bobby Grigas III. And the man that set fast time, a time of 18.132. The Mystic Missile, Bob Garbarino's Dodge from Ramsonville, New York. Starting in position number one with car number four, it is Chuck Hosfeld. That is your starting lineup, ladies and gentlemen, for the TSI Harley-Davidson 150. You've been a great crowd in attendance, very supportive tonight. Mother Nature zapped us for a while, but it is all going to be worthwhile in just a few moments as we are just uh, moments away from the start in tonight's big event. $90,000 is up for grabs in this Wheel and Modified Tour stop number three. The Wheel and Modified Tour started at the Thompson International Speedway for the Icebreaker event where Ed Flemke was the big winner there. The greatest race in the history of spring right here at the Stafford Motor Speedway, it was Ted Christopher. Will one of those names or the cast that follows be added to the list of impressive winners here at the Stafford Motor Speedway for tonight's prestigious event number three on the Wheel and Modified Tour? Who would have thought that Mike Stepanek would have needed a provisional to qualify for the field tonight? But he did, and he'll be starting 27th. However, if we've learned anything during the years at Stafford Motor Speedway, that in most races, starting position, well, it's good to talk about before the race, but once the green flag drops, it almost becomes irrelevant. It sure does. Doug Kobe pulled, proved that uh, when he came out at Spring Sizzler competition and literally started from a provisional starting spot to dominate the racing action to win, driving the chase number 77, the exact same car that uh, Ricky Fuller is running here tonight. Now remember, Mike Stefanik did not expect a time trial well because he said that car was set up for cold and slippery conditions. So maybe Mike Stefanik gets right and if that car has a proper setup, he could be maneuvering his way through the pack. Bob Slade on the starter stand looking the field over. Chad Little in charge of the competition for the Wheel of Modified Tour. The field is now being told to cross over and double up. We're moments away from the start. Chuck Hosfeld and Bobby Grigas making up the front row. They head down into turn number one. Moments away, we're approaching the start of the TSI Harley-Davidson main event of 150 laps. These are the men of the Wheeland Modified Tour. Paired off in rows of two with all the colors of the rainbow. They head down the back straightaway. Lights are off on the pace car. The Racing with Jesus Ministries car in line into formation. Lights come back on at the point. It appears that we're going to be going at least one more lap. As they head down into turn number three, they'll pass the markings of Wheeland and the markings of CarQuest, two of the big sponsors here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. They'll head off turn number four. We ask you to take a look, give them a wave and a send-off as they go by. We've waited a long time for this one here tonight, so give them a wave. Say your way of, uh, well, saying a little note of thanks to these men and their machines, as this is what you've come to see. We often refer to this as the big dance. Well, now it's time to start the music. And only one will end in CarQuest Victory Lane as the big winner for the third stop on the Wheel of Modified Tour. Lights still remain on as they head off turn number two. As uh, it looks like we're going at least one more time by before we're set to go to green. Matt? And it's Chuck Hosfeld, who had a great time trial today. His third race since returning to the number four team owned by Bob Garbarino. Remember the first time he came to Stafford Motor Speedway? He put on a great show, but in the end, it was Ted Christopher who got the win back in 2002. Back-to-back -back spring sizzler victories for Ted Christopher at that time. And I think Hosfeld is very hungry to get back into victory lane. He asked him what his strategy was. He said he'll play it by ear because a lot dictates on what will happen at the start of the race. Don't forget, during the running of Sizzler weekend, Ryan Priest was out in front, looked like a shoe-in for the victory. All of a sudden, a mechanical problem in the engine of the car sidelines this young driver from perhaps the biggest day of his life when it comes to motorsports racing. We'll take a look at him, see what he can do here. Jimmy Blewett also had a tough day during Spring Sizzler competition. 
The Grasso boys know how to prepare that car, and we all remember the story of Brad LaFontaine pulling off all the right moves and all the right strategy to help put Teddy Christopher back on top of his game here at Stafford during Spring Sizzler weekend. Those are just some of the stories that were told then, but it doesn't matter because tonight begins a new chapter in the book of success for the men that live by the grace of God and 600 horsepower, the men of the Wheel and Modified Tour. Clench green flag from Bob Slade on the starter stand, signaling the field, spotters with their hands on their buttons, ready to give the command. We'll quickly go to Tony Sutton. Tony? Well, from down here, the word is, be, take your time, be patient. The track is slippery, and it's cooled down quite a bit. It's going to heat up fast. We're just going to see how patient these guys can be. Patience is a virtue. Tony Sutton has informed all of us of that, and we're ready. Lights are off at the point. Past the New England Dodge dealers billboard, they'll head into turn number three. The CarQuest markings, we are ready to begin. Rows of two, headed with 16 rows strong. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready for the start. This is the TSI Wheel of Modified Tour 150, now under green as they head to turn one. And they go into turn one even. Chuck Hosfeld and Bobby Grigas. And everybody manages to negotiate the two turns, first two turns safely. Down into turn number three. Grigas emerges as your leader. Hosfeld will fight back, and it's a pair of Troyer machines that contend at the point. Wheel to wheel and side by side. Hosfeld still leads them. Holes to the bottom of the racetrack. Here comes Grigas digging in in the outside lane. Eric Beers waiting in the wings, and there's Ted Christopher and Ryan Priest. Good battle for the lead. Priest almost got underneath Christopher in turn number two, but Christopher turned on the Rockets to protect his spot. A little deeper in the pack, it's Jimmy Blewett, and he is being chased down by Matt Hirschman in the 59 battle for the lead. Look at Grigas on the outside making his move. Grigas isn't about to give up. It really takes a lot of concentration to run flat out in the upper groove here at Stafford. And right now, Hosfeld is able to pull away. Things start to settle in. Grigas moves back into formation. He'll settle in the second. A little further back, we see Jimmy Blewett holding off Matt Hirschman. Remember what happened during Sizzler weekend when those two got together? Will it be deja vu? Off turn number four, they freight train back to the line. A little massage on the back bumper of Hosfeld applied by Grigas as he tried to open up some room on the bottom. Here comes Grigas trying to dive bomb his way underneath. Hosfeld didn't have enough power to complete the move. Grigas made a nice bold move from the top side of the racetrack to the bottom, but Hosfeld manages to pull it back, cool and collective. He'll set the pace at the point. Meanwhile, a little further back among the top 10 cars, We've got uh, Ronnie Silk pulling out a line. He's in hot pursuit of Todd Zegedy. Zegedy also was disappointed in his time trial run, but he's not disappointed in an effort. He's marching to the front, and he's one of the first cars to go to the outside map. And he tried to climb to the outside against Rob Summers, but Summers able to hold his own in that blue number one car. So Summers on the outskirts of the top ten. Grigas continues to pester the back bumper of Hosfeld looking for an opening, so a desperation move by Bobby Grigas, and so far, it hasn't been able to pay off. Greg Narducci has prepared that automobile to perfection, and it currently sets strong in second. Big horsepower beneath the hood of that car. Robbie Summers seemed to be having a problem. He drops off the pace just a bit with car number one, as now we see Ronnie Silk with the number 79 car going around him to pick up the spot there. Leader of the pack still remains Chuck Hosfeld. Eight laps showing up on the board. Bobby Grigas is still currently in second. Eric Beers is third. Teddy Christopher is fourth. And Ryan Priest will round out the top five. Keep an eye on the ninth place driver. That's Reggie Ruggiero in car number 14. And all over him is Todd Zegedy in the two car. So we have uh, the second all-time winner on the tour, Ruggiero, doing everything he can do to hold off Zegedy, who now works on the outside. Those are a pair of Ford-powered race cars, and they are pretty much evenly matched, as now we see Ronnie Silk coming on very, very strong. Silk applying the pressure. Silk picked up this ride uh, that last year was driven on a limited schedule by Woody Pitcat, and Ronnie Silk and the Hillbilly team have really hit it off exceptionally well. They both enjoy each other's company. They enjoy the style of driver that Ronnie Silk is. 
we've got trouble now as the caution flag comes out. Charlie Pastriak in the five car. And the number eight car is also involved, and that's Glenn Tyler out of Hampton Bay, Long Island, New York. So it's going to be a quick caution, to say the least. 11 laps up on the board. First caution comes out. We've had only one leader in 11 circuits. It's been Chuck Hosfeld, the championship car that won the Wheel of Modified Tour title one year ago, driven then by Donnie Leah. Leah now runs on the Craftsman Truck Series, and he's done exceptionally well in a very short period of time, Matt. And it was this race uh, last year, one of the six that Donnie Leah won on his way to the championship. So the pace car is back out there. Bobby Grigas, very bold in the beginning of this race, as uh, maybe Hosfeld led every lap, but I think there were pieces of a couple of laps that Grigas might have got his nostrils out there in front. Now the pits are open. We'll see if anyone goes in to make an early adjustment on that car. Usually the only time you do that if your car is really out to lunch and you need to make some adjustments in order to make it competitive. You know, the Grigas race car, as you pointed out, Matt, he's able to go to the outside on the initial start. He ran in the outside lane for about four circuits, then pulled it back into line, and then started to work the inside groove. And uh, So he's got a race car that's working not one groove on the racetrack, but two, and that's pretty tough to do here uh, this early in an event, but uh, he has been able to do that. Greg Narducci's dad ran Stafford Speedway when there was dirt on the racetrack instead of asphalt. And he was well respected as one of the very best when it came to dirt track competition. And Greg learned from those days to today's. He is a good friend of Brad LaFontaine, the crew chief on the car that runs behind him in this restart lineup. They are both the same type of race cars. Manufactured in Rochester, New York. They're called the Troyer brand. There's three different manufacturers involved here in this series heavily. They are Raceworks, BAFCO, and of course, Chassis Dynamics and Troyer Engineering. Back to green. And here comes Brinkus on the outside again, threatening the stranglehold that Hostel has on the lead. Grigas is right there in his hip pocket, fight for the lead. Down the back straightaway, lap traffic could become the deciding factor in this one. Wade Cole and Tyler, and we've got a yellow. And the car in the grass, Eric Burt in the 64, plus another car in the grass. There is Burt, if you look on the Diamond Vision, you see him. It is Mike Stefanik, car number 16, which was the second wow. car that was involved in the altercation. So uh, Stefanik is not having a good run in the reversified metals machine here tonight. I don't think they set it up to run on the grass. No. Not and that's where he wound up. Yep. So they're going to try to do it all over again. It's going to be a very quick caution. There's no question about that. Lights still remain on on the uh, pace car at the front, which means one additional lap before we're scheduled to go uh, back to green at a minimal. So uh, let's see what's going to happen. Let's look at the field. 15 laps are complete. Osfeld is your leader. Grigas is second. Third is Eric Beers. Fourth, Ted Christopher. Fifth, Ryan Priest. Sixth, Jimmy Blewett. Seventh, Matt Hirschman. Eighth, Richard Savory. Ninth, Reggie Ruggiero. And tenth is Todd Zegedy. Just out of the top ten, Ronnie Silk. Robbie Summers, Rudolph, Tomano. Uh, so uh, there's still a lot of racing left in this. Down on Pitt Road, Stefanik is now in. We're going to be checking uh, with Tony on that situation. Mike Stefanik pulls in. Sly and company looking things over on that machine. The 05 is also in, and that's Joe Hartman out of Calverton. And the 12 car is also in. That, of course... Uh, is uh, one of the Eddie Partridge uh, race cars as well. And the 12 will now make it back out in the competition here. So we're still under yellow conditions here. Lights still remain on the pace car at this point. Uh, and now the field's being told to cross over. So it was a 12 of Ken Heggie out of Calverton uh, that now picks up at the rear of the field. Interestingly enough, it appeared that when Stefanik went down on pit road that they added some fuel to the race car as well. Now is that maybe to help in the handling of the car? I think that is the situation, to be honest with you. You know, that, uh, that'll add a little rear weight to the race car itself, and we're going to see what's going to happen here. We're at 17 of the 150 laps into the record books in this TSI Harley-Davidson 150 here at Jackaroots Stafford Motor Speedway. About ready to go back to green.
And these restarts have been exciting so far between Chuck Hosfeld and Bobby Grigas. So we'll see if that scenario repeats. Beers and Christopher in the second row. And we are ready to go back to work. Great getaway for Hosfeld. Hosfeld does a great job, but just as impressive as Hosfeld is, here comes Eric Beers with car number 46. Beers now tries to hug the inside. Grigas is forced to the outside lane. Trouble down the back straightaway. The Reg is out of shape. Reggie Ruggiero pulled off the Timex timely move. Rudolph manages to squeak by, and we go back to yellow. Robbie Summers had no place to go. He became a victim of circumstances in car number one. Suspension trouble for Ricky Fuller in the 77. Yep, the host of NASCAR New England. It's down on pit road, right front suspension peeled back. And that all occurred when Reggie Ruggiero, down the back straightaway, don't know if something broke in the front suspension, but you can see the right front of that car has a, a little bit of damage done to it, and the Reg was able to correct, but uh, it set off a chain reaction that followed, and car number 11 also was apparently involved in that. That's uh, Anthony Cecily in the A1 Auto Center's machine, and uh, he's got some damage done to uh, his front suspension because... Uh, he is uh, setting crossways on the inside mini-mile here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. So the third caution, and this one involves Reggie Ruggiero. Also, uh, what about the 45? Where, what is his status? Was he in the middle of that one? He was involved. He became a victim as he uh, made contact going into turn number three, and uh, that's the young driver that uh, now he's ran so well the field. Yep, uh, during uh, Spring Sizzler weekend. And the 11 car is trying to get back to pit road to the, the right front wheel on the race car. He's broken a tie rod end, and he's trying to go backwards in order to try to keep the, the wheels in line to get to the end of uh, the cement wall there and hopefully get down on pit road. Ricky Fuller's car set stranded uh, damage to the right front. And again, these cars were victim of circumstances. It was a chain reaction and no one's fault by any stretch of the imagination here. Now, uh, Eric Rudolph, one of two rookies in the field. The other is Glenn Rehn. And uh, I keep uh, thinking for uh, some reason that Ryan Priest is a rookie, but he actually ran enough races last year. So is he correct. is not a, a rookie. As Stefanik is back on the pit road, being followed by the 45 of Eric Rudolph, only 16 years old, and he has already won some major races in his career on the Race of Champions Tour. So work still continues for the Stefanik group. They're checking tire pressure on the right rear of car number 16. Also down in pit road, uh, the uh, Rudolph team, car number 45, and I believe that's where Tony Sutton is. Tony? Yes, that's absolutely correct. They're, they're checking the, the uh, toe on the car, making some adjustments on the front end, and they're also changing the left front tire. They want to make sure that there's no damage. That's why they pull the tire off, down off the jack, and he's away. Ricky Fuller is out of car number 77. He stands looking at the right front that is literally laid back, and the, the whole right side frame rail is literally uh, down on the ground of that race car, so there's some extensive damage there. He's talking with car owner Kurt Chase uh, about that situation and what happened down into turn number three, and there was just no place to go, and he just happened to be in the wrong spot at the wrong time. So uh, kind of a heartbreaking situation there for Ricky Fuller. Field is doubling back up. Lights still remain on, but we should be going back to green here in uh, at least one or two laps, perhaps. And Rudolph is back down on pit road with car number 45. You know, in every restart, it seems Hosfeld gets more and more authoritative. That time he got a great jump, and Eric Burrs almost took second away from Bobby Grigas. So Eric Beers, very close to winning the Spring Sizzler a month ago here at Stafford. And that has to be impressive considering that that was only the second race with his new team. But I know you're quite familiar with the driving style of Eric Beers, and I think he is uh, perfectly suited for these long-distance races. He is. Eric Beers is a driver who really has uh, come into his own. He's kind of settled in. He came out of the Pennsylvania area where he competes... Uh, 
on the ROC circuit. He came and uh, first started running on the Wheel of Modified Tour back at the Thompson International Speedway. He actually drove his first Modified Tour ride was in one of my race cars, and he did exceptionally well and caught the eyes of a lot of folks. He's been a longtime friend of Kevin Crowley, who's the crew chief on this car, and uh, it's a magical team. They've done exceptionally well in a very short period of time. So uh, keep your eyes on Eric Beers. He lives on Mud Lane in Northampton, Pennsylvania. I'm not making that up. And his next door neighbor is the Hirschman family. So uh, a lot of successful race drivers come from uh, Northampton, Pennsylvania. And Eric Beers is one of those success stories coming from that location of the country. Talk about crew chiefs uh, on the teams that are right up front. There's a lot of history there. No question about it. Kevin Crowley is the crew chief on the 46 car. Brad LaFontaine on the 36 car. Michael Bowler on the 3 car. And the Grasso brothers, the little guys that done good on Jimmy Blewett's cars. Then you've got uh, up front, you've got the 4 car for Chuck Hosfeld. Very strong. Bob Garbarino is a master of this business. And uh, he finally had the success that he deserves. He has uh, uh, been very very supportive of modified racing over the years and winning the title with Donnie Leah, he'll tell you, was the highlight of his racing career. He's had a lot of the great legendary drivers. Pete Zanardi did an interesting article on the who's who and who have driven uh, the Mystic Missiles over the years. And uh, the names are phenomenal. Carl Bugsy Stevens, Brian Ross, it goes on and on and on. Leo the Lion Clary back in the good old days and uh, Tim Conley, Robbie Summers, uh, Chuck Hosfeld, of course, been there once, done that, comes back to do it again. Uh, Jerry Marquis. Yep, Jerry Marquis. Uh, very sad. I think one of the saddest stories about 2008 was the fact that Jerry Marquis kind of quietly just slipped away on us and uh, decided that he was no longer going to be running in the modified division. And uh, it was a great loss for all of the modified race fans here in the northeastern region of the country. And you pointed it out so many times. Jerry Marquis was another one of those individuals in this sport that never got recognized uh, for the talent that he had over the years. He just was there. He won races. He wasn't always that flamboyant, but he was one of the very best. The only driver ever to win a 300 lap here at Stafford Motor Speedway and a 200 lapper, which was a spring sizzler, and he was the only one that was able to pull off that combination. Sure was. And... Uh, he did it with a lot of uh, different race teams, a lot of different cars uh, over the years, and uh, had tremendous success. Did it in full-bodied racing as well in the Bush East Series back then. And he would have had won two 300-lap races if it wasn't for the Mystic Missile, which was driven that day by Tim Conley, who was able to get the lead for Marquis late in the race with a bottom shot and uh, one of the great 300-lap finishes here at Stafford. And Marquis didn't win that uh, race, but he came back a year later to win again. He sure did. In that race, he uh, managed to finish in second. And we're telling old war stories. He was driving my race car then. So pretty good back in the good old days of modified racing here at Stafford. Let's see what's going to happen as we go back to green off turn number four. Looking for the restart. And again, you pointed it out, Matt, Hosfeld seems to get quicker on each and every one of these restarts. The color yellow screams at the front of the field. That yellow is Chuck Hosfeld, but there's no one crying anyone's yellow here. These guys are really running in flat-out style. Here comes Teddy Christopher to the outside of Eric Beers. He runs to the top side of the racetrack, and Matt Hirschman and Jimmy Blewett are duking it out just out of the top five. Now remember at the Spring Sizzler, Christopher passed a lot of guys on the outside. Let's see if he can pull it off against Eric Beers. Hirschman and Jimmy Blewett in a great battle, a little deeper in the field. And now on the outside, Richard Savory is pulled even with Todd Zegedy going into turn two. Richard Savory showing a lot of muscle here tonight. He's really been on top of his game in this one. And look at Ronnie Silk. Silk now moves in, becoming factor number five in a five-car battle for the sixth spot as they work their way off the turn. Here comes Savory again, the superior oil number 21 working the outside of Matt Hirschman. Good run for Richard Savory. And look who is approaching the 79 of Ronnie Silk, the man who drove that car last year. Woody Pitt. Oh, trouble. Savory gets on the brakes hard. The car does a twitch and spins around, and Richard Savory 
will bring out yet another yellow. So caution flag comes out again. 30 laps show up on the board, and Richard Savory's good run turns into a difficult one. Fourth caution of the event, this one for a minor spin with car number 21, a heartbreaker for Richard Savory. The real story before that took place was a battle between Jimmy Belewitt, Matt Hirschman, Todd Zegedy, and Ronnie Silk. And guess who's there with him, hanging around with the big boys? It is Woody Pitcat with car number 88. And isn't that the way it always works on the racetrack? Is uh, Pitcat one notch ahead of his teammate, James Savali, in car number 28, and one notch behind the car that he drove last year, the Hill Brothers number 79 this year, driven by Ronnie Silk. You know, interestingly enough, can you imagine this? Woody Pitcat's full-time job is working on the number 28 team for James Savalli and car owner Don King. Now that's a kind of a, an interesting story all by itself. I don't think uh, that's something you'd see happen in, in a lot of uh, garages these days, but that is the case. Woody has a full-time job. He helps maintain of the uh, Raymar Hall cars, both of these cars, and he was given the opportunity to run this particular race car for uh, this uh, tonight's presentation because of their sponsor, TSI Harley-Davidson, being a part of the program. Woody is a very talented driver. There is no question about that. You've already witnessed that in our SK Modified feature here tonight. James Savalli is very talented as well, and uh, it's a, a good combination here. Down on pit road, the 12 car is back on pit road. Ken Heggie, the 45 car, is also back on pit road. That's Eric Rudolph back in again. The 11 car is in for Anthony Cecily. The 8 ball is coming back out for Glenn Tyler. So uh, it has uh, been an interesting chain of events. They're working on the racing surface to the bottom of turn number 4. They bring out the uh, turbo there to... Uh, help clean up and remove any debris that might have been kicked up onto the racetrack uh, uh, when that caution flag did come out. So uh, going to double them back up. Front row still remain pretty much the same in this one. And so does the rear of the field remaining the same as Mike Sepanik is still at the tail end of this field, which is uh, pretty surprising. We expected that a uh, Stefanik would be making a move up, but he was involved in a couple skirmishes, and he just hasn't been Mike Stefanik tonight. Certainly hasn't. Uh, a very, very tough start, and uh, let's see what's going to happen now. Lights are off on the safety vehicle. They'll head down into turn number three. We'll see if this time, if Osfeld is as strong as he's been in the past. Remember on that last restart, Eric Beers seemed to be good for a couple of laps, and Teddy Christopher starting to come to life with car number 36. They head off turn number four. We're about ready to go back to green, and Matt Hosfeld again on top of his game. Every restart, he gets stronger and stronger. This time, he's being shadowed by the combination of Beers and Gringus. Gringus on the outside has a run going. He sure does. He takes it in deep, but not enough to get by. But he isn't going to give up. Dogfight battle for positions one through five. Grigas now pulls it back in the line. Here comes Teddy Christopher. Ryan Priest is hanging there with the big boys with car number three and Todd Zegedy. Keep your eyes on Zegedy. He was not pleased with the way his car ran in time trials here today. He started 14th on the grid and he is already up among the top six cars. Meanwhile, Ronnie Silk goes down underneath Matt Hirschman who's been playing around with uh, Jimmy Blewett for several circuits. They come to the stripe, 37 laps are now complete. That time, Hirschman lost about two spots, and it's Ronnie Silk starting to pester the back bumper of the Jimmy Blewett car, car number 19. So that is a car Ronnie Silk drove a year ago. See Savory slowing up on the turn three area, and suspension problems on the 21 car. Down into turn number one, Hosfeld is still doing a fine job of setting the pace. Grigas is looking really racy, still in second. And Eric Beer is set still in the third spot. Here comes Ronnie Silk, down underneath Jimmy Belewitt. That's the battle for the seventh spot. Silk took a peek at it, then changed his mind, then pulls back in the line and runs literally in the tire tracks of Jimmy Belewitt. 
Off the second turn, Grigas is your brand new leader. He leads him down the back straightaway. Hosfeld has to settle back into second. Two leaders in 39 laps, and Grigas becomes leader number two. And Grigas, who has never won a race on the Wheel and Modified Tour, is out in front. A little deeper in the pack, the battle continues between Blewett and Silk. Silk almost had room that time. And things are also getting interesting for fourth and fifth between Ted Christopher and Ryan Priest. Priest might have an alley underneath Christopher. Ryan Priest made a bid for it. It just didn't happen that time. But look at Todd Zegedy. Zegedy has been getting stronger each and every circuit by. 41 laps now showing on the board. As they come back to the line, Grigas is still your leader. Pulling out a line again was Ronnie Silk with car number 79. Just didn't happen that time. He now taps to the back bumper of Jimmy Belewitt. Off the second turn, down the back straightaway. That's a good battle. It's going on for position seven and eight. Currently on the racetrack, the leader is still Grigas as he brings him back to the line. And Ted Christopher still setting in fourth place, but Ryan Priest continues to challenge him for that position. So Ryan Priest, the 17-year-old from Berlin, not intimidated by Ted Christopher. He has gone after him the last handful of laps. Good battle there, a little further back in the field. Now James Savalli has went around Woody Pitcat. He scrapes the front straightaway wall, but that doesn't seem to stop him in a battle among the top 10 cars. Moving now to try to take over second is Eric Beers. Beers made a bid for it on the inside, but Hosfeld suddenly slammed the door. 45 and counting here at Stafford. And Bobby Grigas continues to widen his lead over the combination of Hosfeld and Beers. What's Ronnie Silk up to? Once again, he tries to get underneath Jimmy Blewett as he continues to massage and the tap dance on that back bumper, looking for an alley. Good racing action there and among the top 10 cars as now Grigas is starting to string it out just a bit at the point. Meanwhile, Ronnie Silk is still all over the Jimmy Blewett race car as they run nose to tail. A little further back in the field, we haven't heard much from Ed Flemke with car number 10 or the Danny Sammons machine, car number zero. But Grigas is looking more like a champion each and every turn here in this feature event. Richard Savory way off the pace now with car number 21 after running among the top six cars. And Mike Stepanek starting to show a little bit of life as he tries to get a spot away from Billy Pouch in the 0-6. The script is the same, and the fight for 5th and 6th and 7th is Ronnie Silk just can't figure a way to get by Blewett, and now it's going to be a three-way fight for that position as Matt Hirschman has come back to life in car number 59. It almost appeared as if Matt Hirschman was uh, backing out of it a little bit for a while and letting Silk kind of work over Blewett. Ronnie Silk pulls out a line, but Blewett still runs that perfect line that is not giving Ronnie Silk an opportunity to be in the right position to make the transition and take over that spot. But the siesta is over for Hirschman. He moves up. That time Silk had his best opportunity, and Blewett was able to... Trouble for Blewett. He slows down. Silk gets by him. Jimmy Blewett got off the throttle. The car went sideways, and that was all that Ronnie Silk needed to take over the spot. So we see Todd Zegany and Ronnie Silk coming to the front of the field with a vengeance. Leader is still Bobby Grigas, and he's starting to pull away as he comes up on Richard Savory as they work their way off turn number four. Right now, Bobby Grigas is operating the way Ryan Priest did in the opening laps of the Spring Sizzler, except it's the 09 of Grigas doing the damage. Two runners within handshaking distance of each other, Chuck Hosfeld and the 46 of Eric Beers. Those two cars could fit inside a birdcage, but it's Hotsfeld who's able to do most of the chirping. Good racing among the top positions here as they continue to battle lap after lap. Ryan Priest used to come to the races and watch Teddy Christopher. Now he is giving Teddy Christopher a run for the money. The Bowler prepared race car is a big factor in this one, a savory car slightly off the pace. Ryan Priest is still watching Teddy Christopher, except now he's got a better seat. Sure. A more expensive seat, too. Sure does. You can't argue with that, Matt. Is, uh, the leader still remains Grigas. As they come back to the stripe this time, Chuck Osfeld is still running in second. The 46 of Beers is third. Then it is 
Teddy Christopher in the four spot. Fifth is Ryan Priest. Sixth is Todd Zegedy. Seventh is Ronnie Silk. Eighth position is Jimmy Blewett. Ninth position is Hirschman. And tenth is James Savalli. Just out of the top ten, his teammate, Woody Pitcat and Rowan Pennick will follow. Meanwhile, at the top of the field, it continues to be a joyride for Bobby Griggis in car number 09. Savory, he is a lap car. Everybody able to get by him. Kevin Goodale, the latest car to make his way past the 21. Now Klemke approaches. Does anybody have an answer for Bobby Griggis? Remember, he had a great time trial. So this is not an optical illusion. He has won in the late models. Yep. He's won on the True Value Series. And he is threatened in the uh, Wheeland Modified Tour. Tonight is the best he has ever run. That car almost running this racetrack, the half mile, like it's a slot car. It just goes the perfect line each and every time by. And it is not starting to slow at all by any stretch of the imagination. It's getting stronger each and every time by. Chuck Hosfeld still running strong, but not as strong as Griggins. 59 laps are now complete. Teddy Christopher still waiting in the wings. Meanwhile, a little further back, Matt Hirschman and Jimmy Blewett. Hirschman almost had Blewett at that time. And then just as evil earlier as Blewett's car became, Hirschman's car did the same. And James Savali is still in the neighborhood of Matt Hirschman, although not close enough to make him worry. And things are heating up for second and third again. That battle has gone on for lap after lap between Hosfeld and Eric Beers. Ted Christopher. What do you think what kind of strategy he will use tonight? Right now he's being pushed to the limit by Ryan Priest. Second he is right there in car number two. As there is still plenty of race left. We're not even at the halfway point yet. And Griggis has a sturdy lead. He certainly does, and that lead is not diminishing by any stretch of the imagination. Chuck Osfeld still holding off Eric Beers and uh, Ted Christopher. Remember the strategy for Christopher that Brad LaFontaine put together during Spring Sizzler weekend. He said, just ride out to the halfway point of the event. We'll come in, we'll make an adjustment. When you, we send you back out, you'll be good to go the distance. And that was the story then. Will that be the story here tonight? It's Griegas is way out in front and literally starting to pull away. Little further back, oh, Jimmy Blewett and Ronnie Silk come together in turns three and four, and that was a shot that would jar the fillings in anyone's teeth by any stretch of the imagination there. So uh, Blewett coming back off the turn, hunts down Ronnie Silk, but Grigas will cross the stripe, 65 laps and counting. And Silk and Jimmy Blewett can fit inside a beehive and now starting to buzz is Blewett, and he slingshots his way underneath Silk to pick up the spot. Ryan Priest just tested the waters underneath Teddy Christopher. It did not work as he uh, literally pulled out a line and pulled it back into formation here. Uh, but uh, he was able to just pull back in the line with no real pressure there. Chuck Hosfeld is starting to run Kevin away. Priest in the grass after making contact with the 36 car. He gathers it back though. He does lose about six or eight positions on the racetrack. But there's still plenty of time to get back into this one for uh, the driver of car number three. Meanwhile, a little further back up front, Jimmy Blewett has went around Ronnie Silk and picked up a position there. Silk is hunting down Blewett and then there's Matt Hirschman with Savali and Pitcat, the team cars, running in hot pursuit there. Blewett is one of those drivers you don't think of when you're talking about patience, but maybe that car is getting stronger as this race goes on, as he made a pretty efficient move underneath Ronnie Silk to pick up a position. And Jimmy Blewett loves to do his passing on the bottom, and that's how he went to work on Silk, and now he's starting to pull away from the 79 car. It's a good battle right there, as you pointed out, as now Ryan Priest is still trying to get back into the hunt in this game with car number three. 70 laps, just five laps shy of the halfway marker in this event as they continue to run deep in a turn number three. Leader is still Grigas. Grigas coming up on lap traffic. It is going to be Wade Cole, the first of the cars that he is about to lap. 
with Heggie's number 12 car and Savory with the number 21 car. It must be a great feeling, though, for Bobby Griggins to go around the second turn, or turn and look at the diamond vision and see no other car in the picture. That is how dominant he's been, but now he's about to weave his way through the lap traffic. So we'll see if that's an adventure or if it's going to be routine as Griggis approaches Wade Cole on the outside. Bobby Griggis goes to the outside of Wade Cole. He gets the passing flag. The Wade Cole race car is a former Bob Pulverary car. Ran very strong during Spring Sizzler weekend. As now Griggis comes up on his next target, that is going to be Ken Heggie with the number 12 car. So uh, Griggis having no problems with the lap traffic as we speak. And it's always a comfort level for a driver to have a couple of lap cars between you and the guy in second place. And that is the case for Bobby Griggis as Hosfeld will have to uh, pass a couple of lap cars himself in order to uh, be able to see the 09 car. I think he almost needs a Hubble telescope to see that 09 car. He needs a GPS system in his car to find out where Bobby Griegas is. Bobby Griegas has just completed the 75th circuit. We are past the halfway. Let's set the field for you. Bobby Griegas is your leader. Second is Chuck Hosfeld, car number four. Eric Beers is third. Christopher is fourth. Then we go to Todd Zegedy in the fifth spot. Sixth is Jimmy Belewitt. Seventh spot is Ronnie Silk. Eighth spot is Matt Hirschman. Ninth spot is James Savalli, and tenth is Woody Pitcat. 77 circuits in. That's your top ten here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Now we look a little deeper in the field. There's a pass being executed by Glenn Tyler. So even though he has made a couple of pit stops in the early portion of this race, he is still competitive. But nobody is more competitive than Bobby Griegas. He threatened to do this a couple of times. That's right. Tour, but tonight, he has everything going for him. He had a good starting position, was able to get by Chuck Hosfeld early before he used up too much of his tires. And now, uh, the only thing he has to worry about is getting by that double file lap traffic. He is trying to get underneath the uh, one of those cars. And look at him. He is still tough. Sure is. He just passes the Glenn Reen race car, one of the outstanding rookies of 2008, and uh, made it look uh, like it was just a typical Friday night ride as he works his way out of the next car in line. Hosfeld is pulled away from Eric Beers about the same distance between Bobby Griegas and Hosfeld is uh, between Hosfeld and Eric Beers. There's good racing action wherever you look in this one. 81 laps now up on the board. And the same distance that Hosfeld has on Beers, Beers has that same kind of advantage on Ted Christopher in fourth place. And Jimmy Blewett in car number 19 trying to erase some of the gap between he and Christopher. So that could get pretty exciting in a few laps. The battle between Christopher and Blewett is shaping up. It sure is. And uh, you can see that Christopher's car is not working as well as it did earlier during the first, uh, well, 60 laps in the competition here. Jimmy Belewitt's car literally looked like it was in big trouble around lap number 40. And then all of a sudden, it seemed to go the opposite way. And the car started to really stick. And there was some great, great action there. Look at what has happened here, Matt. The four of Chuck Hosfeld is now come back to life and the distance that looked so phenomenal earlier between him and Chuck Hosfeld has disappeared. And as you watch, you will see that Hosfeld suddenly has become one of those drivers that looks like he just got a shot of adrenaline. He's flying now again. Now, is he going that much faster or is Greg is slowing down in car number 09? I think it is Hosfeld who has been able to turn up the volume. Let's go to Tony Sutton. Well, I'll tell you what, Bobby Griegas came out of turn number two, sideways, big time, managed to gather it back in, but that gave Hospital an opportunity to, to close the gap tremendously. I'll bet you he was sideways for about 100 yards coming out of turn Trouble. two. Trouble, down the back straight away. A car came out and tagged the wall. I believe that was Eric Burns' car. 
as something in that car went awry and it was in the direct line of Chuck Hospel. Leader still remains Grigas, but the big question is for how long? 87 laps now showing up on the board, and Grigas is coming up again on lap traffic, and Hosfeld is closing that gap. And right now, those lap cars are allies of Chuck Hosfeld because Grigas has to slow down a little, and Hosfeld doesn't. That is so true, and uh, Grigas might have been a little too frisky in the first 75 laps. Hosfeld was a little more cautious, but now his strategy is suddenly changing as Hosfeld is reeling him in, and he is coming on like Jack the Bear. There is no question about that. Each and every time by, if you've got a stopwatch, time Chuck Hosfeld. He just closed up about four car lanes. We've got a spin down the back straightaway. I believe that is the Reen car, and I am right. Glenn Reen goes spinning on the back stretch. That's going to bring out a yellow. The now, big question does that is, mean, are we going to have some action on pit road? It could be just that. Will the leader pit? Will the cast that follows? Pit road is closed. There's the NASCAR wheel and modified official with the red flag in hand. It is not open at this time. But this is tightening everything back up. 90 is up on the board. That was a 60 lap green flag run. That ended in the fifth caution flag as Glenn Reen had trouble on the backstretch. So we've had five caution flags, two leaders, and now the big question, will we have some pit stops? And I don't know. I don't know if uh, Bobby Grigas can uh, win the race on the tires that he has now. So uh, usually a lot of guys will wait and see what the leader does. Well, we have had two leaders so far. Car number four, Chuck Hosfeld, led for the first 39 laps. And then Bobby Grigas took the lead on lap number 40, and he has led up to lap number 91. So uh, let's see what's going to happen now. Pit Road is open. Grigas, is he going to come down on Pit Road? Yes, he does. With him comes your second-place car, Chuck Hosfeld, your third-place car, Eric Beers, your fourth-place car, Teddy Christopher, Jimmy Blewett, Todd Zegedy, and the number 79 car for Ronnie Silk with James Savalli. We go to Tony Sutton. Well, Regis is in the 09 car. They're going over right-side tires. They're also putting fuel into the 09 car. The catch can is on. The fuel man is on. Now the three car is in. It's really, really tight here because they're right next to each other. Right side tires on Grigas's car. Blimke is in, and his back end is sticking way out. So when Grigas comes off the jacks, he's going to have to back up in order to get by. This, the 46 is out. The 79 is out. 28 is out. Grigas is down. Grigas, Grigas can't get out. He is stuck. They're pulling the car back. Grigas cuts the wheel trying to get out traffic and he almost collects the 59 and Grigas is out away. Much, much slower pit stop than they wanted. The three is still here. They push him off and Ryan Priest spins the wheels and he also pulls out. The car that has lost the most time on pit road is the number hard to see. Looks like the number 12 car. And Jimmy Blewett lost an awful lot of time on pit road with that tire change. Scoreboard tells the story. Leader is car number 59. Matt Hirschman inheriting the lead after a wholesale change of pit stops. Car number 99, Jamie the Jet Tomato, is your second place car. Your third place car, as shown on the board, appears to be. And where is the 88 of... Uh 88's down on pit road, so I believe your third place car might be the 46 car of Eric Beers. And then Chuck Hosfeld would be your fifth place car. So for Beers and Hosfeld, what was Beers was third. He comes back after pitting and is fourth. So he didn't lose too much, and neither did Hosfeld, who was second. And comes back fifth. The big loser is Bobby Grigas, who got trapped in the pits. And other cars that did not have a great pit stop included the following cars that we were quite surprised at, Matt. 
Well, it was Ted Christopher in car number 36 who had a, a bad pit stop. Remember, he was in fourth. We see Danny Salmon stalled on the back stretch in the zero car. Now, Jimmy Blewett had a pretty uh, mediocre pit stop, too, as he did not get out. Now, Mike Stefanik, remember, he is on the lead lap, and now he is uh, in the mainstream as he was out in the wilderness for most of this race. And now, uh, by virtue of that last pit stop, he has moved into the top 15. Down the back straightaway, Danny Salmon's car has come to stop. That is the Ralph Solom race car. Apparently something mechanically wrong with that race car. So unofficially, the leader of the event is the 59 of Matt Hirschman. The 99 car directly behind him is your second place car. The scoreboard is showing the 88, which is not the case because it went down on pit road. So your third place car will be the 46 machine for Eric Beers. Then your fifth place car would be, unofficially of course, the number four of Chuck Hosfeld, and then it's Ronnie Silk. So uh, that's currently uh, how they uh, are as we go back to green. Behind Ronnie Silk would be James Savalli, Todd Zegedy, Rowan Pennick, And Kevin Goodale, who almost got nailed by Bobby Griggis coming out of the pit, yep. out of his pit stall. So, uh, Eric Beers made out the best. He was third when they went into pit. Yep. Hats off to Kevin Crowley and his team. They did a good job and, uh, with that move. You know, sometimes the uh, racers aren't one on the half mile. They're running that little stretch of pavement in between. And uh, that could be the case tonight for Eric Beers. Last time they were questioning his pit strategy. Tonight it could be right on the money. So let's see what's going to happen as they uh, again look to restart. Matt Hirschman inherits the lead. Jamie Tomato right there with him. Hirschman wins the drag race. But keep your eyes on Chuck Hosfeld. Hosfeld is flying in the outside lane. And he just goes by Eric Beers like they stopped. And look at Teddy Christopher. He waltzed on by Bobby Grigas. And he is also coming back to the front of the field. Now Matt Hirschman's father, Tony, was probably the best ever in the modified tour on conserving his tires. Now trouble for Flemke as he bobs and weaves in turn two, loses a lot of ground. But uh, hopefully Matt Hirschman was paying attention when his father was winning all those races, conserving his tires, because he has old tires and there's two hard chargers behind him named Hosfeld and Beers who have fresh rubber. And look what Hosfeld is doing with that rubber as he just nitros his way underneath Jamie Tomano. He made it look so easy, and the tail that wags a dog suddenly becomes Eric Beers, who moves into the third spot. Tomano shifts back to the fourth spot, and here comes Ronnie Silk. Silk looks racy with car number 79. He is currently your fifth-place car. Silk pulls out a line. Todd Segedy is there with him. Jamie Tomano left the door open, and in comes Ronnie Silk. The hillbilly race car is now your fourth-place car, Teddy Christopher, Battling with Rowan Pennick. Christopher's coming to the front, and here's a bid for the lead. And Hosfeld just couldn't pull off the move as he tried to squeeze his way underneath Matt Hirschman. You made the point early in this race, Ben, that it appeared that Matt Hirschman was backing off the pace a little in the first 30 or 40 laps to let things sort out. So maybe he has enough rubber to hold off the initial surge. Remember, a lot of times, if you can't make the move in the first 15 or 20 laps or so, then your advantage with those tires is gone. That is so true. And, uh, of course, Hirschman learned those lessons well from his dad, as you pointed out, Matt. But Hosfeld is still glued to his back bumper as they head off the second turn and down the back straightaway. Ted Christopher going to the outside of Kevin Goodale. And now Mike Stefanik has come back to life. Trouble now. Ryan Priest goes around the bottom of the racetrack. And here comes the yellow as Priest Got two wheels down on the grass, and then the back end just uh, walked right around on him. 103 of the 150 are now complete. Now, what do you do if you're Matt Hirschman? I know what I would do. Stay out. We'll and see. See if you can uh, maybe just hold off Chuck Hosfeld and Eric Beers long enough so that their fresh tire advantage uh, would, would disappear. And uh, that usually happens, as uh, we pointed out, after about 20 laps. 
Well, the red flag still remains down in turn number three on pit road, meaning that uh, they cannot come in until that goes to green as the pace car picks up the field off the second turn. And now the green flag is out and pit road is open. Now, big question is, is Matt Hirschman going to take a dip down on pit road? Is he going to stay out? No. He chooses to stay out. Let's see if anybody else is planning on coming in. Jamie Tomato decides to come down pit road with car number 99. And it looks like he might be the only competitor to take advantage of this late lap caution. No. We've got car number 12 for Heggie in. And it looks like Eric Burns, number 64, Wade Cole, and Ryan Priest, the car that brought out the yellow, is also down at pit road. Ryan Priest is right rear. Look like it uh, might have been a problem. Let's go to Tony Sutton. Well, Ryan's in there pulling off some rubber and debris from underneath the, the scoop in the front, and they're also checking to see that the... Oh, they're making a shock adjustment on the right front of Ryan Priest's car, and that's all they did. They checked the tires, they made a slight adjustment on the shock absorber in the right front, and then sent him out. Well, here's an unofficial uh, rundown on lap number 105. Matt Hirschman, your leader, car number 59. Chuck Hosfeld, the four is second. Third is Eric Beers, the 46. Fourth is Ronnie Silk, the number 79. Fifth is Todd Zegedy, the number two. Sixth is James Savalli, the 28. Seventh position, Kevin Goodale, the 58. Eighth position, Teddy Christopher, the 36. Ninth position, this is unofficial, the 93 of Rowan Pennick. And now, among the top 10, it is car number 16, and that, of course, is Mike Stefanik. Never well, count Michael out. It was a magical mystery tour for Stefanik, but he made it to the top 10, and it looks like we are going to be ready to restart the race. Imagine if you're Matt Hirschman. You got the oldest sneakers on on the track, and everybody else has brand new rubber behind you and next to you. How are you going to hold them off? We'll see what Matt Hirschman does as we get ready to go back up to speed. Tire management might be the deciding factor in this one. Let's see what's going to happen as Chuck Hosfeld gets a nice run in the outside lane. Hirschman tries to guard his quest for the lead. It doesn't pay off. And look at Ronnie Silk. Silk comes like a blur among the top five cars. And as Hosfeld takes over the lead, Silk moves in to take over third. This combination is working. And now Ronnie Silk appears quicker than most among the top three. But Hirschman is not leaving quietly as he is hanging tough with Hosfeld. And now Hosfeld is going to be able to clear the 59 car. So Hosfeld undisputed leader. Trouble. Down in turn number one, Brian Priest. Ryan Priest is in trouble again. Wade Cole, Jamie Tomano, and Eric Burnt has had a night that he'd like to forget. Caution flag is back out, lap number 109. So we really saw great racing action up front, Matt, from the last restart where Chuck Hosfeld finally took back the lead. Matt Hirschman had to settle in for second, and Ronnie Silk, we talk about... Uh, coming on strong this combination during the off season they put this deal together the hillbilly race team keeps this race car in the south campaigns it on the wheel and modified tour schedule in the north and ronnie silk has done just a magical job so far in only three outings he's been very very strong and very consistent so uh safety crew super clean safety team checking out the front straightaway making sure that everything is okay and uh, we are still under a yellow flag situation here down at pit road ryan priest is there again wade cole also at the end of pit road 
And maybe Tony Sutton might have more on what's happening with the Ryan Priest team. Tony, do you have anything for us? Well, the handles went away on the car. They made some adjustments to it. And uh, when he went off the first time, he came. He complained on the radio that the car wasn't handling, but he continued to push the car pretty hard. And then you saw him put two wheels in the dirt coming off a turn, the back straightaway going to turn number four. They've checked the car over. I think it's more than anything else. It's more exuberance and, uh, you know, just a quest to get to the front that's uh, gotten him in trouble. And, and the result of that is that he's moving backwards rather than forwards. Okay, thank you, Tony Sutton, for that uh, update from Pit Road. We are remaining under caution. Next Friday night, May 30th, is CarQuest Dealer Night here at Stafford Motor Speedway. CarQuest Dealer Nights. We'll see the sky lit up brilliantly by a multimedia fireworks presentation, the first of three fireworks nights here at Stafford during the 208 season. If you'd like tickets for our next Friday night's CarQuest Dealer Night Fireworks Extravaganza, they are priced at $15 for adult general admission, $5 for kids ages 6 to 14 general admission, and children ages 5 and under admitted absolutely free. Reserved seating available next Friday night for $18 for all ages. You can order your tickets by calling the Speedway box office at 860-684-2783. And uh, we do want to remind you one more time to join TSI Harley-Davidson Ellington for the grand opening of their new all Buell sales showroom. The Buell factory demo truck will be on hand with the complete 208 lineup ready for you to experience the innovations that make their motorcycles the envy of the competition. Buell, the world's best handling motorcycle. Buell parts and merchandise specials will be available also. And why not mark your calendars for Friday, May 30th, and Saturday, the 31st. Lights are up on the pace car. Lap 113. Let's go back to Ben Dodge and Matt Buckley. Well, it looks like we're about ready to go back to green. Uh, the uh, Glen Reen machine was the beneficiary, and uh, we'll pick up at the rear of the field. Hosfeld again on the inside, Matt. What do you think is going to happen as we're about ready to go back to green? I think he's going to get a great getaway. Let's see what happens as they nudge their way into the fourth corner. And Hosfeld gets a jump. And look at him go like a Jonathan Papelbaum fastball. Hirschman hanging in there. Look at Ronnie Silk, though. He just doesn't want to give up tonight as Ronnie Silk moves into second. And Todd Zegedy, his neighbor, not far away, is up among the top four cars. And there's Teddy Christopher also right there. And Mike Stefanik. We counted him out earlier, Matt. And that was a big mistake on our part. And Matt Hirschman, he might be getting hung out to dry on the outside because Zegedy went by him. Now Christopher is on the verge of doing that. And Eric Beers wants a piece of that action as Matt Hirschman in a very vulnerable position on the outside, unable to tuck in. You know, Teddy Christopher and his strategy might have paid off again here because, as Brad LaFontaine told him during Sizzler weekend, just ride it out till about the halfway point. We'll give you the car and the combination that'll get you back to the front. And it looks like Christopher has found that combination again. He sets currently in the fourth spot. Stefanik is now battling with Hirschman in a dogfight battle for the seventh and eighth position currently as we speak. This is what makes Mike Stefanik a nine-time champion. It looked like he was headed for a fiasco tonight. And instead of panicking, they made some good adjustments on that car. Trouble in turn two. That is Goodale. He wound up on the grass. He brings it back out onto the asphalt, and we stay under green. Leader still remains Chuck Hospel. Ronnie Stilk now moved into second, and Todd Zegany up to the third spot. Fourth position is still currently held by the number 36 of Teddy Christopher. Then it's Eric Beers in position number five. A little further back in the field, Bobby Grigas, that looked so strong earlier, is struggling. So is it Brian Fries. They're currently running among the top 18 cars in the competition here. You know, it has to be a delight for Hosfeld to look out his rearview mirror and see that big battle developing between Ronnie Silk and Todd Zegedy, with Christopher also involved, because if Silk and Zegedy are paying too much attention to each other, Hosfeld might be able to widen his lead. It certainly does appear that that is the story pretty much there. 
meanwhile, here comes Stefanik again to the outside of Matt Hirschman. Mike Stefanik picks up the spot, and now Todd Zegedy moves in. Look at Jimmy Ballou, and he got way up in the loose stuff, and he has lost several positions with car number 19. Silk has lost two as Zegedy went by him, and then Christopher has gotten by him. And now Zegedy, will he have enough time? 28 laps left to try to corral the four of Hosfeld. Running very strong again, and the strategy that has been set by his crew chief seems to be working one more time. As Hosfeld is still out in front. Zegedy still running a good second. Christopher is still third. Ronnie Silk is fourth. Then it's Beers in the fifth spot. Sixth is Stefanik. Seventh is Hirschman. Eighth is Eddie Flemke. Ninth is James Savalli. And tenth is Jimmy Ballewitt. And right behind those two, Rowan Pennick in the 93 and Eric Rudolph in car number 45. Will anyone have an answer for Chuck Hosfeld? And you think that Todd Zegedy has the capability and so does Christopher. And Christopher has opened up a pretty huge advantage over Ronnie Silk and now here comes Spears. Dive bomb, Knievel type move and he is able to springboard his way. A little twitch coming off the corner by Beers, but it didn't slow him down as he gets by Silk. Good racing action there, and here comes Stefanik Man, trying to apply the pressure. He? Yep, he really honestly is. He and was a little nervous tonight because he doesn't like the attention of uh, being honored tonight. He said he would just rather race. But uh, through the years, he's been very good with the media, but he's even better with a race car. He is ready to try to lightning bolt his way underneath Ronnie Silk. Great comeback. The story of this event has to be Mike Stefanik with that number 16 car. Ronnie Silk has been strong, but not strong enough, as now Stefanik is really starting to work him over. Christopher trying to close up the gap between the Deuce car, which is currently your second place car, of Todd Zegedy. 128 laps now complete. And somewhere in the middle of the pack, right behind Charlie Pastriak is Bobby Grigas. And it's uh, difficult to uh, remember that in the beginning of this race, he was a dominant car, but in one pit stop, he went from riches to rags. Sure did, and uh, the story pretty much the same for Ryan Priest, who was so strong earlier. Now Stefanik still is working over Ronnie Silk. He tried the high side, now he's trying the low side. 20 laps remain in the TSI Harley-Davidson 150. Stefanik trying to make the move. Meanwhile, at the front, it looks like Todd Zegedy is gaining on Chuck Hosfeld. 19 laps to go, and things are getting interesting at the front. Sure are. There is no doubt about it. Three cars have pulled away from the opposition here. Chuck Hosfeld leads the band that follows. It is Zegedy still in second, and Christopher still in the third spot. Stefanik still all over the back bumper of the Ronnie Silk car. Now Stefanik pulled out a line and fought twice of that as they continue. Well, I think right now, Ben, Ronnie Silk has a Moon River car wider than a mile. Sure does and seem Stefanik like that. Is having a difficult time looking for a route by it. Osville still maintaining about the same margin over Todd Zegedy as Zegedy is oh, maintaining. Silk hits the wall hard. Ronnie Silk, what a... Right underneath the USG sign, he thundered the wall between turns three and four. Heartbreaking situation there for the driver of car number 79, and believe it or not, he fired the car up, and it looked like he was going to try to drive away from that situation. That is a heartbreaker because Ronnie Silk well, we turned in some around. great action tonight with that 79 car. Now we apologize on the scoreboard. Our fourth spot is out of order temporarily. But in the third spot, it is Ted Christopher. And uh, down to the final 14 laps. We are going to the wire because now we'll have a a restart between Hosfeld and Zegedy with Christopher, a factor. It is going to be interesting. 
There have been four different leaders in this event. Only one individual has led the event on two different occasions, and that is Chuck Hosfeld, your current leader. Second is currently Todd Zegedy. Third is the 36 of Ted Christopher. In the fourth spot, it is the 46 of Eric Beers. And in fifth position, it is the 16 of Mike Stefanik. Sixth spot unofficially is Matt Hirschman. Seventh spot, Eddie Flemke. Eighth spot, Jimmy Belewitt. Ninth spot, James Savalli. And unofficially in the tenth spot is Rowan Pennock. That's an unofficial rundown of the top ten. Just out of the top ten, we've got Rudolph, the 06, the 5, the 3, and the 09. Well, let's bring in the radio racer here for his comments. What do you think? Does Todd Zegedy have enough time and have enough uh, steam to get by Hosfeld, who has really been the dominant car uh, for most of this race? Well, if there is a driver in the top three that can do it, I would think that Todd Zegedy could do it. You can't count out Christopher either. And uh, what can you say about Chuck Hosfeld? All of a sudden, boom, he's back and he's leading the pack. It's going to be a fun final 10 12 laps when we go back to green flag racing and as i say you can't count out either zegedy or christopher and uh keep your eye on the number 36. i think he gets his mail in that car Dean, because that's <laughs> home to uh, chuck hosfeld and he's back home and uh, doing a great job as we stay under yellow now 13 laps to go well, the number 79 car, it looked like it was going to be a double hook, but apparently uh, that is uh, not going to be the case currently. That's got to be one of the heartbreakers of this event because Ronnie Silk just did a great job with that 79 car, came to the front of the field, was contending with Hosfeld, and then uh, a good night turns into a bad night for Ronnie Silk. You're going to see that team win some races this season. I can almost guarantee that. What do you think, Matt? I think uh, that's an easy prediction to make because uh, they had a chance tonight. And unfortunately, he wound up in the barrier with about uh, 16 laps to go. 13 laps remaining and counting here in this, the TSI Harley-Davidson 150. We appreciate all of you being so patient and staying with us to the end of this one. Uh, it has been a very, very impressive run for Chuck Hosfeld. Just as impressive as Todd Zegedy and Teddy Christopher has also shown a great deal in this one. You know, we try not to make too big a deal out of the point standings this early in the season, but Hosfeld came into tonight with a 21-point lead, so... Uh, Things are looking good for the Mystic Missile team in the early part of the season. And we are about ready to determine the issue of the TSI Harley-Davidson 150 double file restart between Hosfeld and Zegedy. And all night long, Hosfeld has done great things on these restarts. Let's see what's going to happen. The lights are off on the pace car. Hosfeld and Zegedy paired up in the front row. Teddy Christopher and Eric Beers, row number two. And there's the green. Zegedy holding his own as they go into turn one. Zegedy takes it in deep. He has it by, well, a chrome horn down into turn number three. Ted Christopher is there, but Hospel brings him back to the line as your leader. Zegedy hung to as long as he could. It is Hospel out in front. Look Zegedy at Stefanik. About Christopher. Stefanik on the outside. Mike Stefanik had a race car that didn't want to work in the early laps of this event, and now he runs like a jackrabbit on the outside lane. Stefanik is up to the fourth spot. He has a chance with nine to go. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Zegedy trying to track down Hosfeld. Christopher not batting an eyelash in third. And Stefanik has made the comeback of the race. Can Hosfeld hang on? There's an all-star team of drivers behind him. Sure is. Flemke moves into that pack. 
so does a James Savalli, and Jimmy Belewitt now is showing some muscle. Eight laps and counting down. Hosfeld still in command. A little further back in the field, Ryan Priest is picking them off one at a time. Ruff, somebody's going to make a run, and Hosfeld, it's going to have to happen now. Zegedy can make up a lot of ground in a hurry, but it is not happening. It does not happen. This time, when they come back to the stripe, five laps to go. Christopher going for his 100th career victory at Stafford. But he's going to have to get by two of the best and only has five laps in which to do it. If anybody's been saving anything, they better show those cards now. The poker face time is over. The eight of Glenn Tyler almost comes to a screeching halt down the front straightaway. And he is going to try to crawl out of the way. He does. We stay under green. Hosfeld stays in the lead, and he continues to stretch it out by about a furlong over the combination of Zegedy and Christopher. Yellow flag comes out. Glenn Tyler could not get his car off the racetrack. It stalled down the front straightaway, and that is going to change the whole complexion of this event, Matt. And we're looking at a potential green-white checker ending to the TCI Harley-Davidson 150. So Glenn Tyler was not able to uh, get that car fired back up, and uh, that is not what a lot of the teams in that dogfight battle up front were looking for. It gets a reprieve for Zegedy and Christopher. Because it looked like uh, Chuck Hosfeld, he was almost able to start counting the squares on a checkered flag. Now he is going to have to... Uh, try to figure a way to hold off Zegedy and Christopher and Not to mention Stefanik. Stefanik, yeah. Stefanik's just been amazing. He looked absolutely off the pace in the beginning of this event. You have to give credit to Sly and the rest of the gang. They did their part and uh, was able to uh, get that car dialed back in, and it is among the quickest cars on the racetrack. Remember, he said that he had that car set up for cold and slippery. So as the night got a little uh, chillier, Christopher got faster, or and Stefanik got faster as uh, Tyler Bank shoved off the racing surface. And we are going to be headed for a green-white checker finish to determine the champion of the TSI Harley-Davidson 150. And Stefanik started, what, like 27th? I mean, he was back in the field. Exactly, 27th. And he stayed back there for a while. So uh, he has picked up 23 positions. Since the start of the race, I think they give out uh, trophies for that. They sure do, and he just has done a remarkable job in this event. There's no, no doubt about it. Single file restart, green-white checker. See how it all quickly can change. 148 laps show up on the board. Caution flag still being displayed. Yellow lights still remain on on the caution car. Chuck Hosfeld is your number one car, car number four. Defending series champion car owner Bob Garbarino chopping at the bit, looking to add another win to his list of victories. A year ago, Donnie Leah did that in this same race car. Todd Zegedy still currently in second. Teddy Christopher third. Mike Stefanik is fourth. Eric Beers is fifth. Eddie Flemke is another one that kind of hung around with the top guys. And now he's currently setting in the sixth spot running about four points. Jimmy Belewitt, seventh. Savalli is eighth. We believe Matt Hirschman is ninth, and Rowan Pennick is tenth, and we're not exactly sure on that. And Ben, you know how much I hate cliches. <laughs> <laughs> you know the one about the cream rising to the top? Uh, yes, yes. Well, Stefanik and Flunky, you know, you get down to the single digits, look who is there, and, uh, might have a chance to get even closer to our leader. Let's see what's going to happen here. Lights are off on the pace car. Looking for the restart. Single file. Bob Slade looks the field over. He points at them. And there's the green. Zaggedy pulls out a line. 
Hosfeld tries to guard it. They touch. Christopher back to life, but Hosfeld is the leader. Well, Zegedy had his opening, and the veto power by Hosfeld. They go into turn four. Look at Jimmy Belewitt coming on among the top six cars. White flag is out. This is the final circuit. Blewett trying to get outside of, of Beers. He is able to get even. But the man in the spotlight, Chuck Hosfeld, one turn away from victory. Off turn number four, Chuck Hosfeld has done it. Bob Garbarino's car is back in the winner's circle. Todd Zegedy will finish in second. Teddy Christopher to finish in third. Mike Stefanik, a great run for fourth. And Jimmy Belewitt pulls off a top five in this the TSI Harley-Davidson 150. They'll head to CarQuest Victory Lane. And Chuck Hosfeld is the guy that really was able to plan his strategy and do it well. And I think maybe the big factor was early in the race when he kind of let Bobby Grigas run and hide. He was able to save his car, made a pit stop, stayed in the top four, and was able to get the lead early and about lap number 100. So, a great performance by Chuck Hosfeld. It's been a long time since he has won a tour race. Todd Zegedy had one brief moment, Ben, on that restart. Almost was able to dive bomb his way underneath Order Hosfeld, one. but just couldn't pull off the move. you got to give him credit, though. As a true champion and a true driver, he gave it his all, and he came close. But close, well, just was not good enough for tonight's presentation and he uh, gave it a great shot but he stayed clean and it was just a great piece of driving by Zegedy and of course Ted Christopher a first at the spring sizzler and a third tonight and there is the man of the moment Chuck Hosfeld fastest in qualifying today and fastest for 150 laps So it is a celebration ready to take place at CarQuest Victory Lane. The man to tell you about it, Tony Sutton. Well, Chuck is taking his time uh, removing the gloves and the safety gear. After 150 laps, I think he can, he can slow down a little bit for this activity. As the crew comes over to the other side to uh, congratulate him. Garbarino actually smiling, passing out hats. Bob leans in to congratulate his driver. Chuck with the remaining uh, safety gear off. The Hans device comes off. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen, is PSI Harley-Davidson Whale Tour 150, Chuck Hosfeld. Well, you got to get the uniform just right. I'll tell you what, man, that was a performance. That was something really wild to watch, and uh, everybody was at your heels, and it looked like the two-car was going to try and dart underneath you in that last restart, but you uh, held fast. Yeah, I was getting a cut. How's my hair look? My hair look okay? Your hair looks fine. All right, good. Uh, I'm just joking, of course. But anyways, I'll tell you what. Uh, Zigzag is a good racer, and I knew I had to protect the bottom, and he got a good run on us, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'm, uh, I'm just thrilled to be hooked up with my team, my old team, Bob Garbarino's the best. My crew's the best. He made a good call on the pit stop. Bob Mueller did it, and uh, we had the car just a hair too tight at the end, but I don't care. We won, baby, and I'm happy about it. You know, we started out here, it was kind of cold and damp, but the track dried out very nicely. Did the track come to you as, it's, as it continued to dry out and get some more rubber on it? No, the track didn't really come to us. It was the adjustment we made <coughs> Excuse me, on the pit stop. Uh, that's what really helped, and I'll tell you, when we put those tires on and... Um, and we got going, I, the car was evil to drive because the tires were so cold. But you know what, all that aside, I just want to thank uh, the fans. And I want to thank my team. My team's the best. And Ron Hutter, who built our motor, I mean, couldn't ask for a better motor, better team. And uh, I'm just thrilled. Well, Chuck, a terrific performance. Congratulations. Uh, man, it's, uh, it's neat to be here, isn't it? You know, um, I love this tour. I love the Whalen Modified Tour. And uh, it scared me that I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have a ride on the tour because... I consider it my home. I love this series, and uh, I'm glad to be back involved with it. 
Well, man, we're glad you're back because you're fun to watch. Thank you. I appreciate it. Back upstairs. And congratulations to Chuck Hosfeld and Bob Barbarino, Mr. Missile Team, back in CarQuest Victory Lane here at Jackaroot Stafford Motor Speedway. Tony is making his way down CarQuest Victory Lane. He'll talk to our second place finisher, the man in the number two whisk machine out of Ridgefield, Connecticut. And that, of course, is Todd Zegedy. Tony? Chuck and the crew down there. We'll get him back here in just a second. He's appreciative of the uh, of the space he was given. Let me go snag him here real quick so we can. Come on, I gotta put you on the air, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, Todd, I'll tell you, it looked on that last restart like uh, you had enough to get underneath him because man, you were you were flying to coming coming off that start, but just didn't have enough to carry it in. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I probably could have sailed it in there, but I don't know if we would have both came out of that corner. Uh, one thing, I, 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 restarts are my thing. I, I love restarts. Um, you know, back in the days, I used to do some drag racing, and just brings back memories every time we hit those restarts, and I think that's where a real strong point is there. And, you know, I, I, if I cut a, a better shift a little bit better, maybe I would have got up underneath them a little bit more. But um, we're looking at the big picture, and finishing is the way to go. You stayed out of trouble. You moved through the field. You got up to second place. Congratulations on a great finish. Yeah, we got the car b uh, back together pretty good. Um, you know, we, we were struggling the last uh, for race here, so we got a pretty good handle. We still got some work to do. We weren't quite uh, where we should be, but uh, we'll get it right. I know these guys are awesome. They're working real hard. Lloyd's a huge help, and uh, Michael Smiglio, the owner, is a big, big plus. My spotter, Don Barker, is doing a big deal. Unilever, um, you know, everyone. Uh, our engine department is great, so we're good. We're, we'll get one. It's just going to take some time. Todd, congratulations on second place. Thanks. Back upstairs. Okay, Tony, again, a quick reminder, next Friday night, May 30th, is CarQuest Dealer Night. We'll have a huge fireworks display, and uh, the gates will open at the normal 5 o'clock time. Tickets for next Friday night's CarQuest Dealer Night. Fireworks Spectacular will be $15, general admission for adults, $5 for the kids 6 to 14, general admission. And as always, kids 5 and under admitted absolutely free. Let's go back down to CarQuest Whistery Lane. Tony is with TC. Tony. Visiting a lot uh, down here on the podium area. Yeah. Good run, dude. Yeah, pretty good. We're just uh, a little bit too free, you know. The the rain probably hurt us more than anything, you know. I heard a lot of people, you know, the track was pretty green, so um, wasn't wasn't too much of a two-lane racetrack there. Well, I'll tell you what, the space that was available, you made well use of, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I did, you know. Another good finish, so keep going for the next race. Well, congratulations, Ted, on third place. Thanks, Tony. And that's pretty much going to do it for us here at Jackaroot Stafford Motor Speedway. On behalf of Ben Dodge, Matt Buckler, Tony Sutton, I'm Dean Mercier. We hope to see you back here next Friday night for CarQuest Dealer Night and the Multimedia Firework Display. We'll see you next Friday night. Have a great Memorial Day weekend and drive easy going home.